All right, guys, Bitcoin is absolutely going insane. $72,000 Bitcoin. Who would have known? Uncharted territory, price discovery, three weeks before the happening or four weeks, whatever it is. This has never happened in the history of cryptocurrency in the last 15 years, 13 years, whatever it is. Bitcoin has never sailed past its all-time high before the happening. We are in record bullish mode. Um, overall, altcoins looking great. Solana 147, really Cardano and a lot of your big cap altcoins are kind of where they've been for the last week. This is kind of more of a, I'd say a Bitcoin run. And once Bitcoin settles out, you're going to go, we're going to go into full blown alt season. Although I did see that uh, Litecoin is almost back up to like $95. Where the hell is Litecoin? I can never remember. Yeah, Litecoin $95. So Litecoin is going to be at 100 before you know it, just like we said it would. And I saw that Theta is a 370. We're pushing $4 on, on Theta, guys. I mean, whoa. Did I not tell you guys that Theta was probably going to be the top, top gainer in our portfolio? Still got VeChain under $0.05, cents, but everything's looking incredible. You know, I saw that uh, Trump, Donald Trump, former President Trump, my friend, it was on CNBC this morning talking about crypto. And there's such a stark difference between Donald Trump, the conservative Republicans' policy on crypto, and... Um, guys like Biden, guys like, um, who's the SEC? Gary Gensler, all these liberals who really don't want anything to do with crypto. They've been pushing against it at every, every stance. You know, Jay Clayton, who was with Donald Trump, his SEC guy, said that Bitcoin ETF should, should have been approved two years ago. So it's a whole different thing. I always say if you're voting, if you're in crypto and you vote for a, a Democrat, it's kind of like voting for Adolf Hitler and being a Jew in World War II. It's like you're voting against your best interest. But here's Donald Trump on CNBC just 10 minutes ago. Something very specific for regulation, and that is Bitcoin. And, and I have in the past, I don't know if you recall, but I said you got to get, you, you, you got to look at this closely, uh, Mr. President. And and you know the, the current SEC commissioner. Uh, Gary Gensler finally allowed for these spot ETFs, and now we see Bitcoin at almost uh, 72,000. But it's almost as if uh, it's in spite of some of the efforts uh, over regulation of, of maybe the Biden administration. Do you, do you have any thoughts now on, on, uh, on crypto? Well, it's taken it its own life. You know, I do little things sometimes for fun and, you know, make money with it, and but I have fun with it too. Uh, you mean NFTs, you bought Bitcoin? No, no, no. But I it sometimes will let people pay through Bitcoin or will let people uh, get involved in a new, it's, you know, if you, if you think of it, it's an additional form of currency. And I used to say, you know, I want one currency. I want the dollar. I don't want people leaving the dollar. And, and I, feel, I feel that way. But I will tell you, it has taken on a life. Uh, I did a thing that people smile at, but it was wild. Uh, we did a thousand sneakers, so limited edition sneaker run. The last one, and, and you could go through, you know, our crazy new currencies, because that's what I call them. They're crazy, new, whether it's Bitcoin or others. And so many people were buying these things. And ultimately, the last pair of sneakers sold for approximately, I hear, $450,000. It was a limited edition, a run. They were gold. They were, you know, nice, cute. Uh, and we thought it was just a very small thing. It was a branding thing, and it was had a good time with it. The last, the last pair uh, sold for $450,000. People were going crazy for these sneakers. You probably were, too. Everybody was. I, I have every, every friend I have has called me for a pair of sneakers. So it just took off. And I noticed that so many of them were paid for with this, uh, with the new currency. The that, and it yeah. is that it's a, it's a new uh, uh, crypto, yeah, you know, cryptocurrency. And it, it, I couldn't believe the amount. And I'm saying, you know, this thing has really, and other things I do, uh, people are using it. And you know, I would be, a, I, I, I'm very much a traditionalist. I like staying with the dollar. You know that from when I was there. It's make mm -hmm. make the dollar the choice. I hate when countries go off the dollar. I would not allow countries to go off the dollar because when we lose that standard, that will be like uh, losing a revolutionary war. That will be that will be a hit to our country, just like losing a war. 
and we can't let that happen. And too many countries now are fighting to get off the dollar. And yep. and frankly, and I, I know Jay feels strongly about this, and Jay did a fantastic job, by the way, in a, in a group where there's always scandal and problems. Jay went through four years. There wasn't one scandal. I don't know, Jay, maybe you can tell me, but there wasn't one <laughs> scandal. That is the most scandalous position because it involves massive amounts of money. With Jay Clayton, we had no scandal, zero, nothing. Anyway, I mean, there's a few minutes left, but essentially what he's saying is, I believe in the dollar, which you should say if you're a U.S. politician, I think the dollar should be number one. Duh. You can't come out as a president and say, I want to get rid of the dollar and go and everybody go into crypto. That's crazy. But he's saying, and, he, and Jay Clayton is on this call too, former SEC commissioner. They're basically saying... Bitcoin has taken on a life of its own. If people want to, if people want to be invested in Bitcoin, let them. Like I said, Jay Clayton wanted to approve this ETF two years ago. He thought Gary Gensler was crazy for doing what he did, going after all these crypto firms. Um, you know, Jay Clayton did go after firms like Ripple and stuff like that. But for the most part, Jay Clayton has been pro Bitcoin, and so has Trump. And I don't know how you can't be a supporter of Trump, and and also you know be a supporter of crypto because the Democrats. Look at the Democrats, guys. You know, there's a lot of Democrats who want to ban crypto altogether. And the only reason we even got this ETF approval with Gary Gensler is because the courts made him do it. Democrats don't want you to have Bitcoin because they can't control you. They want to be able to control you. So there's, there's Trump on Bitcoin. Awesome interview. You guys should watch the whole thing. It's like a 40-minute interview. Uh, talking about other things as well. One of the reasons that Bitcoin is pumped today, people are talking about, um, some UK news, Bitcoin hits record high above 72,000 as UK opens the door to crypto exchange traded projects. Uh, the Financial Conduct Authority said Monday that it wouldn't object to requests from recognized investments exchanges to create crypto backed exchange traded notes or ETNs. So this is kind of what we've been talking about on this channel. Like once the hype starts to build in Bitcoin, Litecoin, Theta, whatever the coin, once the hype starts to build, Take Bitcoin, for example. We've seen it at all-time highs over the last week. Then you see other countries flowing in too. They start to open their doors to Bitcoin because that's just the way human nature is. So now we're essentially seeing other countries essentially adopting Bitcoin, adopting uh, ETF, adopting uh, funds. And this is only going to spread to you know, Japan and, and other countries throughout the world. So things are only going to get bigger. Doesn't mean we're not going to have a nasty bear market. Oh, we will have a nasty bear market. But overall, everything is going great. I saw Cardano active addresses spike to 76,000 as price looks to break 80. We kind of talked about that last week, but it's not just Cardano, guys. All of these top tier um, coins right now, even coins like Litecoin, you can look it up. People are just creating addresses like mad. Like people are getting into this stuff. And the only reason we're not seeing a full blown alt season right now is because Bitcoin is stealing the show. But all, the higher Bitcoin goes, and when it levels off, the higher these altcoins are going to pump in alt season. So I don't know where Bitcoin is going to top off. Is it 72,000? It looks like we're coming down from 72,000 a little bit. Could that be it? Are we going to hang out between 68 and 72 and then go into alt season? Or are we going to get some other big pump today and go back up to 75 or go up to $80,000? Nobody knows. But wherever Bitcoin tops off, that's when the altcoins are going to start to go into their alt season, and that's coming any moment. It's coming at any moment. You look at the top meme coins; they're all still up. They're not. They're not essentially pumping right now because Bitcoin's stealing the show. But they're all still up, even though Bitcoin is pumping. You're not seeing life sucked out of the altcoins. I mean, look at BNB, five hundred and eighteen dollars. Ethereum over four thousand dollars now. I mean, who would have thought that? Like a couple months ago, Ethereum wasn't doing much. Like I said, Litecoin was $68 just three weeks ago. Now Litecoin's probably going to be $100 by the end of the day. What do we say for the last couple of weeks on, on this channel? Litecoin's going to be over $100 very soon. So everything is going according to plan. Every and I also want to finish off, you know, I've talked about Gareth Soloway over the last six months, and I made videos countless times saying he's an interesting trader in the bear market, but... Eventually, he's going to be wrong and nobody's going to give a shit about him anymore. Well, if you look at Gareth Soloway over the last year, he's pretty much been wrong all year about everything. He was calling for a $10,000 Bitcoin. 
Um, here's a video I found of when Bitcoin was back up to 27,000. He's calling it for, for it to go back down to 10. And if you look at all the comments on Gareth Soloway's videos over the last month, people are just shitting on him. Like he's nowhere near as popular as he was in the bear market. And I said this numerous times over the last year. Yeah, eventually Gareth Soloway is going to be wrong, as is everybody else, because they don't understand the four-year cycles. They're right in a bear market. It's very easy in a bear market to just be bearish and say, well, we're going to dump. Okay, we pumped up $1,000, but we're going to dump again because that's what happens in the bear market. And Gareth Soloway capitalized on that. He took it and said, I figured out Bitcoin. It pumps a little bit, then it dumps. He made his trading school. Um, you know, he has his premium classes, all these guys selling you shit, selling you shit. And, you know, I've always, I've always talked about the story. I know somebody who, who paid a hundred dollars a month for Gareth Soloway's school and he lost all his money on Luna, uh, trading it to zero and so many other projects. So here he is even right here, just talking about a $10,000 Bitcoin just six months ago. Thank you. Well, it still looks like there's a correlation. It's just that, unfortunately, Bitcoin, the interest in Bitcoin has fallen dramatically and institutions are not stepping in versus over here. The Nasdaq clearly has been the recipient of so much money flow. So so my fear is, again, is that with less interest in Bitcoin only driving it up this much versus where it was at the all time highs and so much interest in stocks, if that were to reverse, do you see more panic hitting Bitcoin and driving it back to the lows? I mean, for all we know, maybe the Nasdaq only pulls back to 12 five but Bitcoin just alone would then go back to the lows. So I think I think right now there's still a risk on risk off correlation there with the stock market. Oh, and Gareth was also talking about the stock market crashing all year and of course the stock market's at all time highs. So this this video came out seven months ago on this channel we were buying crypto telling people to buy Cardano, buy your Bitcoin, buy your theta at 50 cents, buy everything. And even though we had already gotten that low of $15,000 Bitcoin and we had pumped back up to where we are in this video to 26,000, Gareth is still talking about a crash, still talking about a recession, still talking about Bitcoin going down to $10,000. Gareth Soloway, unfortunately, you have no more credibility. I don't know why people still have you on. Um, and that's my opinion on it. And, you know, we have the numbers out there to see his calls. Yeah, occasionally you, you can make some calls that are right, but for the most part, he missed the bull market, guys. If you were following Gareth Soloway, you missed the bull market. You missed it because he's been waiting for $10,000 Bitcoin. And I also read on some other comments, he was talking about Bitcoin crashing back down to $40,000 after we hit all-time highs. So that's why traders in this market, you might make some money and then you're going to pay 50% in taxes, but eventually you're going to lose it all. And no matter what Gareth Soloway does now or says now to try to save face, he was wrong, and everybody who followed him missed the bull market. All right, guys, that's it on that one. Um, Bitcoin looking great, 71,840. Will we go up to 75? I don't know. All season right around the corner. I'm, I'm going to try to do a live stream later. I have a pretty easy day today. So we're going to talk about some things if I can do a live stream later. Maybe tonight, maybe this afternoon. I haven't decided yet. We'll see where Bitcoin goes. But, guys, <sighs> I know some people are kind of thinking right now, this is just Bitcoin pumping, but not the altcoins. I should take all my money out of altcoins and put them in Bitcoin. Guys, these altcoins, the higher Bitcoin goes, the harder they're going to pump. Bitcoin pumps first, it does its little dance and magic, and then comes the altcoins.